Hey guys, it's Adam. Uh, you might remember last year when Ardman Animation's chief model maker Jimmy Young came by my cave to show off a smattering of Ardman's uh, incredible innovations in puppet making. Well, now that we've traveled to the mothership, Jimmy and his team are showing us well more than a smattering. Um, him and his incredible team of puppet masters, I guess, have built dozens of puppets and brand new processes to address the technical challenges of Ardman's new film, Early Man. Uh, let's take a deep dive. Are you ready? Oh yeah, let's go. Jimmy, when you came to my cave last year, you brought some of your amazing handiwork and gave me a little taste of your guys' wonderful engineering of these puppets, but now I'm in your shop and I'm looking at a reasonable portion of the cast of Early Man, and I'd love you to give me a deeper dive into how you take a character from concept all the way to being an animated puppet. No, of course. Very early on, as you, as you probably know, a story mm -hmm. starts, yeah. and during that period, Nick would be writing, do a lot of writing, and then also what he's doing is starting to do a few design sketches. Uh, just over here, we can kind of see some very early sort of very concept step sketches mm -hmm. of what Nick's mm -hmm. been doing. So he's writing and his character developing all the time, and at a certain point, when he's happy, he'll bring in a sculptor and we'll start sculpting. So as you can see, some of these really early sculpts, so the ones that are in grey are probably about three to four years old. And this is what we call a design sculpt. Is the grey colour a choice so that you know that it's one of the first ones? Uh, not really. I think it's just either oh, okay. what the sculptors can get his hands on or, or possibly what Nick wants to see. Mm -hmm. um, so we go from this very early stage and then we we'll do lots of different refinements, then maybe five or six different sculpts that go on during that whole period. And are those refinements based on uh, the requirements of the character in the story, yes. but also how Nick gets to know the character better? E exactly. As, he saw, as that story's evolving, he kind of knowing if he's a bit cheeky or if he's a bit lovable. or And so the, the, the sculptor will adjust those accordingly to how Nick sees fit for him. Uh, so then we can obviously come to almost an end result here of what Doug looks like now. Mm -hmm. Obviously a little bit rough looking, but he's still a, a, a design sculpt. And once Nick's happy with that and that's been approved, and we then go into production sculpt. So we're sculpting it again, right? but sort of in like a sort of classic pose. I see, like the, the, the A pose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the idea behind that is that when it comes into model making then, we can start separating all the different components off and start molding and casting and actually then start properly building the puppet as it were. And that means building its armature, but also engineering what is hard and soft and exactly. the registration points. Exactly. So now at that sort of very beginning stage, we'll get, start to get involved uh, obviously with Nick, uh, but also with some of the animation departments, some of the, some of the um, animation directors, and they'll start sort of fleshing out, looking at the story, what that character needs to do, if he, you know, if he's sort of in any awkward positions and things like that. Oh, so every film might bring with it a set of unique engineering challenges. Exactly. Like there might be an action sequence that requires something you guys have never tried before. Yeah, within this film there's, sort of, there's a lot of jumping around and things like that, so right. we've got to really bear that in mind when we start making those puppets. So really early on in the design stage, that's when it starts to get fleshed out. So once we've done that and we've got the um, design sculpt, mm -hmm. uh, we then sort of start molding it. So here at Ardman, we work in a series of teams and we'll have uh, obviously a head of model making, but right. uh, then it's then broken down in terms of having team leaders. And then within those teams, we'll have um, seniors and juniors and any new trainees that sort of come, sort of come through the system wow. as it were. So it's, there's quite a lot in each team, yeah. um, but also there's a hierarchical type system in there. And normally the senior guys and the team leaders have a big wealth of experience. Right. Some of the guys have been here for over 20 years now. You guys work at, sounds like you work at a little like a farm team, like you bubble people up through the process so they yeah. get to learn. You're getting how it more works. and more experience. Right. And sort of over the period of our, our Ardman's history in model making, and we were very departmentalized where you'd have a lot of people just painting and the people just foaming, but now everyone's becoming more generalist, They're becoming more and more experienced. Oh, nice. So everyone's learning a bit of everything. You know, we still have our specific um, skills within armature making, and some guys would be a lot better at sculpting, but those teams are then all set up. That sounds like it would make problem solving a lot easier when yeah. people each understand what the other teams are doing and the constraints that yeah. they might be working on. And with that, those different levels of experience, those guys have been doing, you know, we're not, everyone's done lots of different projects in the, in the past. Yeah, yeah. And so we'll, we will try not to repeat the mistakes as before and try and build on what we've, what, we've, what we've been doing. So what are some of the unique design challenges that Early Man presented you guys with? So some really early problems that we had first of all. It's the first time we've done a lot of fur work. Uh -huh, we've, done, yeah. we've done fur obviously in Shaun the Sheep, mm -hmm. things that we've talked about before, um, but a lot of these guys, uh, the costumes are all a lot of fur. 
Now we dye all our own fabric in house, mm -hmm. but some are actually required will sort of be stencil dyed. Ah. So this is what this one is. You'll have a base colour and then stencil dyed over the top to give that sort of unique pattern. Yeah. And then some of the characters over here, we'll just pick up tree ball here. But all of these different sets, so all this fabric is dyed, but these are uh, dyed separately and these are cut strips. <gasps> and, and it's all, all sewn together. And they're all sewn together. Oh my gosh. And I have a tiny bit here from a Barry costume. Make sure it doesn't fall over. And we look on the inside. Oh! Each one is sewn in. It's a bit dirty because this yeah. is obviously off a refurbed puppet. Wow, that is so much work. So we are starting to laser cut, but at the beginning we were sort of using a lot of hand cutting. And yeah. Obviously everything still needs to be hand stitched. That's incredible. And that will just slip over the puppet. It has sort of a foam padding inside. Right, right. Going back to sort of the beginning, once we've got that sculpt, mm -hmm. we start breaking it down. Now, for Nuth, who I was heavily involved on, we worked on quite a small team for Nuth here. He's the villain. He's the bad guy. He's that's, very he's very funny. That's Tom Hiddleston. Yeah, yeah. Okay. He's absolutely hilarious. I, I think he's a fantastic <laughs> character. So when I received that sculpt, I then sit down with my uh, armature maker, as it were, and some of the other team members, and we discuss openly how we're going to go about it. So obviously more minds on the job really helps sort of streamline that. Everyone has a slightly different idea right. about how that goes. And when you say armature maker, just to be clear, you mean the interior of this puppet has a rigid metal yeah. armature that allows it to be animated. So, oh. this, this, so this is one of the other characters yeah. here. This is not what's inside Nuth, yeah. but you can kind of a good, good feel. You can May pick I? that up, yeah. Oh. Look at that. Ball and socket joints, classic Ardman stuff. Um, yeah. And also we have a few rotates on at the top in the, in the, in the shoulders, yeah. like here. So, um, tested viewers, if you've seen uh, the video of me visiting Peter Jackson's shop and handling the Willis O'Brien armature for King Kong, the thing I found most amazing about handling it is it's basically the same technology. Like yeah. Willis O'Brien kind of solved this problem in one shot for King Kong and we're still using modified versions exactly. of Exactly, sort of, and all we're doing is really sort of refining it and we may use, be using it more heavily in certain, certain items mm -hmm. and really quite technical in terms of the mouth mechanics and things like that. And when you say you're meeting with the armature team, you're also thinking, I, I would guess, about the weight of the puppet, which means how much load bearing so each joint might yeah, have to do. Yeah, there's so many different problems. With Nuth, he's really top heavy. Yeah. So we try and make him as lightweight but he's, he's still a bit top heavy. But normally you have an armature guy that's assigned to the team, and that's when you start fleshing out and talking problems. So the chap I was talking to was a, a chap called uh, Kevin Wright, and we would, would sit down quite often and have a dialogue in terms of how we were going to build these certain, yeah. uh, the certain parts to him. Once the sort of he, so he goes off and he starts building the armature, mm -hmm. I then start molding the sculpts. Oh. So this is just a fiberglass mold. Right. So this is just for foam latex. Okay. And this will give us, if you can see in there. Oh, I see, it gives you a shell. So we're foam, injecting right? foam latex into there. Okay. So if anyone's had an experience with foam, it's almost like baking a cake. Yeah. It smells of eggs because the ammonia that's in the foam. And it's dependent heavily on the temperature and humidity, oh, which nightmare. is changing constantly. Yeah, yeah. So it's all under climate control. Yeah. And once that gets injected into there, we have certain guys that do the foaming. Uh, that gets baked, that comes out, and that gets trimmed. Uh, the difference, obviously, with from uh, this character with some in the past, uh, like on Pirates, we would sort of hand paint these foams because mm -hmm. it would be sculpted clothing. Yeah. Uh, but with Noof, uh, one of the ladies called Harriet um, actually then made some patterns and actually dress. Yeah, it's dress real, the character. It's, it's, so it's real just fabric. cloth. Yeah, him. yeah, real cloth. So yeah, it has a underwired skirt in there, all his legs. His Look arms. at his tiny. You now his hands have an armature inside them. Yeah. So. I really hate tiny hands. <laughs> I can totally understand why. I think any model why. maker's bane of their life when, you, when you're looking at Oh. So yeah, they just sort of come out. There's little, oh. what you call K&S slots in there. Look at that. If I just pop oh, them down oh, a second, oh, I can just. So, oh, this is where they're born. So this, this, is, is, this, is, born. this is the mold that they come out of. Yeah. And so we're injecting into here and we put a tiny, tiny little armature, a little ball and socket joint in there. And then. And then the, or the, the air will then escape out of here, so you close that up, and inject into this hole, and then all the silicon will come out of these risers here. Wow. And this is, I mean, this is a mold that's been built to be repeatedly used dozens and dozens and dozens of times. Yeah, you have times. to bear in mind, we're not just making one character, we're making multiple characters. You're gonna, I, at the end of production, m how many nooths might you have made? Yeah, so I think we've got about, uh, I've made the seventh one the other day, and we're doing three versions of him in his referee kits. Wow. Which we're currently constructing at the moment. Wow. Um, so yeah, lots of hands will go through there. And it's a really, I mean, obviously because it has to do that, it's clearly a super robust mold that's easily... Yeah, it's a polyurethane with some yeah. aluminum powder, but it, it, you can withstand temperature, mm -hmm. but obviously we're, we're clamping it yeah. and injecting into it. 
Let's so talk a little bit about the cloak on the back. This cloak is all wired. And I, and I got one here for being sort of refurbed, and it has a metal plate in here. So this is this classic thing where you have to talk to your talk to the armature guy and try and figure out this problem because this this is super thin. Yeah. There's a little plate in here, so that enabled what we designed here enabled us to sort of almost just move the cloak around a little bit without having to touch oh. too much of the wires. There's no wires in here, and they're just held under tension when oh, they're into nice. the into the collar, like so. That's such a lovely solution. Yeah. And so another thing, if I can do it right. With all these heads, you have to try and get the heads off. There's a button just in here. That oh, <laughs> that's a new. Is that a new development? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, quite new because normally yeah. it's sort of sliding K and S and things like that. But mm -hmm. just popping those in, and that makes yeah. it even easier to pull out. Yeah, sometimes the animators like to fill in the little hinge because they just like to slide it in and out. It mm -hmm. really depends mm -hmm. on how little they want to move the puppet. Wow. But a lot of the characters now have all these fancy little neck mechanisms. If I pop that down there and I bring up the queen. I'd only found this out today because I've never, I didn't work on the queen. If I bring her down there, if you press on this middle section here. No way. On the, and then her head should come up like that. She's got like a So these are already delicate, but so you've got, to, you've got to remember to press the right one. <laughs> otherwise you're going to snap the rest. Yeah. So that, if you can see in there, that yeah. just alters the, so that's designed by Aiden, the guys downstairs. That's, that's you guys having too much fun. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I have a question about yeah. Nuth here. Does the jewel on his medallion flash in, in desirable or undesirable ways when he's being animated? There's no, it's not sort of backlit or anything like that. Yeah. It's just literally the lighting that they, mm -hmm. that they use on it. So I think it does some really nice effects, but it's just a... It's gorgeous. A great little jewel here. Wow, and you're casting this. So yeah, so that, what's going on here, I can quickly show you this. This is the mold for the... For, his for the neck. neck collar, so there's a, oh, there's a, a hard mold. So there's hard molds. Uh, this is sort of what we call fast cast, or this is polyurethane again mm -hmm. in, the, in the back here. Oh, but the the, the but, neck ring is is soft. Yeah, so that piece gets bolted in. Right. And then we'll I'll just sort of literally just inject again. That one gives the collar. Wow, while you're doing cold molding. Yeah, it should have just literally just yeah, yeah pushing it through. Wow. With silicon, and then once that's done, I've done some chains, and I sort of we'll stick it on here. Yeah. And then I'll stick on the, the medallion there. And then that all gets bolted down into the middle right there as well. Oh, look at that. Right, right, right. Within, so it's uh, super modular. And within there, there's actually, you can feel there's a, like a, there's a hard core. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was designed, like I said, with, with Kevin really early on to make sure that collar fitted in exactly the right place. I see. So I can just literally go in, pop that off, replace the collar, and bring a, bring a new one in. Wow. And then leg molds. So the armature, this is actually bolted Ooh. to the bottom. This is the second half here. So these again are designed to go upside down. Right. So you inject through the top mm -hmm. and the risers come out by the foot pads. Oh. This has obviously been painted. This is just for display purposes. So, and this is what it looks like inside yeah. there is some type of armature like we'll that. Or just sitting with inside there. And you've bolted it from the bottom so yeah. that the rub, when you cast the rubber in, it casts around it. Yes. That's right. Wow. What happens if you uh, have to tighten up one of the joints after it's been molded? <laughs> yeah, so when the puppet's finished, you have to sort of very carefully make tiny slits where the joint heads, or well, the bolt heads are, I should yeah. say. Uh, so that's a little bit like, I've just made this beautiful puppet. <laughs> Sometimes you can leave it, but you just, every animator requires different tension. So your job is, is not just to make these models, They'll be coming in and out of the department all the time. Right. Jimmy, I need you to tension this leg. I need him to walk. His arm's a bit loose. Can you loosen it up? Can you tighten it up? So that's what we're constantly doing around trying to obviously finish off our wow. puppets as well. Another development that's done in-house is the mouth plate system. In previous films and, and, and whatnot, yeah. um, obviously plastic gets very hot. And so they can distort quite easily. You, you know, you're the classic taking on and off the, the mouth shapes. Mm -hmm. And now, if I can just pull this one off, hopefully, I'm going to distort this mouth shape, actually. There we go. Destroying his mouth. So we look on the back there. It's done yes. with a certain curvature, and we've got a top teeth with the top teeth slider. Mm -hmm. And then you can see there, that'll slide on and off the plates like so. Oh, there's a little, yes. And then this has been engineered here. So, so it's a positive just, mechanical yeah, connection. Yeah, it'll just sort of click onto there. So basically, I'm just sort of taking that stuff off. And I'm going to slide that one in on there. And then the animator will then sort of dress that in. For every different for move, everything. change of the mouth. Yeah. So we'll wow. then sort of pull that off and carry on like that. Um, 
I have a question about the, uh, you have color matched plasticine. Uh, so that's plasticine silicone. Yeah, yes. And that's an astound, uh, that, I, I, I imagine that's non-trivial. No, it's very hard. <laughs> There's quite a few people that do it here. And one of the, one of the chaps called Jade has a, has a big part in that. So for instance, now this is obviously silicon. Mm -hmm. Like we're explaining about the heat right. onto the floor. And yeah. this type of look, is really what Nick likes, the sort of real thummy. That it's, it looks like you've got your fingers yeah, yeah, on it. Yeah, exactly. So these are all silicon, and they're silicon for a reason, because if we were to make these all in plasticine, it would take us an awful long time to get the film finished. Now there are shots where an animator will require a plasticine hand when he's holding stuff. Yeah, so yeah. We, so we can use the same molds. Oh, We've got course. some bigger molds here. So we can use the same molds. And then it matches perfectly. Yeah, so that J will then sort of match the colors, as you can see. This is silicon, this is plasticine. You know, we have a slightly different tone for the nose, but it's, it's a very complicated process and it takes a long time. Yeah, I bet. And I also noticed that a lot of these characters have um, actual hair. Yes. Now let's see if I can pull her hair off here. Oh. There we go. <laughs> so as you can see, there's a, like a polyurethane yep. uh, skull cap. With a little with, with screw a there and a the magnet top. registration. And then all the hair will be sort of dressed and glued. Wow. Um, unlike Sean, where we just sort of use PVA mortar to mm -hmm. stiffy the hair, yeah. as it were, sort of make that hair nice and stiff, um, we're using like another polyurethane. So, we so they can move just a little bit. Just a tiny bit, all for boiling. Nick likes an element of that, so that's hmm. sort of moving around. Um, but we're trying to keep it to a min minimal wow. amount. This is, is this the first time you guys have had so much hair in a yeah, film? Yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy, really. Nice little story about this fella in terms of when they were trying to get the, the look. Yeah. When they, when, so during this whole process that I've been talking about, we're back and forth with Nick all the time. Mm -hmm. So we'll see Nick maybe once or twice a week. He's a very busy man. He's obviously got other things to deal with. Yeah. Um, so we're trying to make judgment calls of what he likes. We then will then show Nick, hey, Nick, what do you think about this? Mm -hmm. So when they first did this originally, I think it was done in chamois leather. Yeah. And it was, and it really, I really love the look. Yeah. But the problem is with chamois leather, it doesn't move as well for animation. So then they had to mold, sculpt, texture it, <laughs> mold it, foam it, and then paint it up so it looked like chamois leather. Yeah. So it's, it's yeah, all those. And so that's what this is? Yeah, this is just a sort of foam Foam lace. to look, because it looks yeah. exactly like chamois yeah. leather. Wow. But it also gives it a better scale yeah. when you mold it like that. Pop him down there. And then during this whole mouth development phase here, we're trying to speed up some of the processes. Mm -hmm. Rather than just making a single mold uh, for a mouth shape, or a back plate, I should say, in the top teeth, yeah. we're trying to sort of figure a quicker way out and sort of streamline that process. So that was sort of developed in-house really early on, uh, sort of on, on, on farmers, uh, on sort of Shaun the Sheep and things like mm -hmm. that, and that's an, on, on pirates even. And that sort of progressed further and further down the line and sort of been refined even more. So we have what these we call a carousel mold. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And I've got, another, I've got a really cute one to show you over there right. as well. So these are top teeth for Noof, mm -hmm. what I was just showing you earlier. These. Oh, take that out. So these are what we call gravity fed. So they look a little bit like centrifugal, but they don't get yeah. spun. You just pour put a resin. syringe in, yeah. and then pour the resin in, and it just... And it makes you 12 pairs or something like yeah, that? Yeah, so these like will sit in. Oh, look at that. Like that. And each one is exactly registered and can be replaced by any other yeah, one. Yeah, so we'll make a set of masters. They'll get molded first of all. And there's, some really, there's a really cute one here. Uh, one of our guys called Sam had made. And these are actually for the message birds. Top of his nose, no. like that. So that's probably the smallest carousel mold yeah. that's been made here. But it, this, I mean, this is so much more efficient than doing one or two at a time. Oh, God, yeah. Because yeah. you have so many dozens to make. Yeah, yeah. That's incredible. And I, this is, yeah, I'm just blown so away. So these get refined and refined and they become smaller and smaller. A, a, a chap uh, called Nigel here we've been working with closely with doing these molds. He came up with a new technique which was based on um, doing the plaster uh, rosettes in the ceiling mm -hmm. by making a profile curve. And then you can just sort of make the layup that much quicker. Yeah, yeah. So everyone sort of, you know, everyone sort of, you know, we're working really closely with each other and coming up with new ideas and really pushing that. So you guys are keep, continue to keep refining yeah. the, the process so that you can make efficiencies for yeah, each Yeah, something new like film. this would normally, like in the old days, maybe five days to lay up. We're taking it down to like two and a half days, two days. Right, right, right. So we can right. really, really push it through. Much, much quicker. Yeah. Wow. That is Put awesome. Put that one back off you there. You know, when I see the scope 
of what you have done. It doesn't sound like two or three years is enough time to make 15 some odd versions of every single character. It's amazing what you guys are able to do. Yeah, I mean, once, once the first main character has been made and it's finished, what we call a prototype character, Nick will take a look at it, he'll approve it, he'll go out to the animation team onto the floor and they'll start doing jumps and stretches and moving around. Test animation. Just test animation, just make sure everything's working okay. Because sometimes you can build a puppet and take it out and go, it's not twisting right, there's something that's not working here. Hopefully in conversations that you've had previous with the animation team, yeah, you yeah. have ironed all those out, but it still happens. Once that gets approved by the animation department, it's when we start making multiples. So that's when we're sort of making seven or maybe 16 of the same character. And that will be scheduled out during the course of the film. We won't make seven all at once. Right, right, right. So we would have made two Nooths, and then when I would have gone on to make something completely different, another character, and then come back to the Nooth. So it gets made out over sort of the... the but the requirements on you guys are intense because Nooth has to match scene to scene to scene to scene, and he might be on three or four different sets at once. Yeah, and, it's the, and also these puppets age as well. You know, you could be out, one Nooth could be out shooting for two months, and you just have to keep on top of the maintenance to make sure he looks pristine and as nice right. as when you then sort of slide in number two. So that they don't pop, there's not yeah, some color exactly. change. Yeah. Wow. As we're talking about all these puppets, I'd like to talk about the elephant in the room, or as you guys might refer to it, the water buffalo on the table. This is by far the largest puppet on this table. Wow, oh, he's really light. It is quite light, isn't he? Wow. So during the whole process of, of, of making all these main characters, we'll have what we call special characters that come up. Yeah. Things that are only in front of the camera maybe for a couple of seconds or a few frames. And this is the chap. So he's obviously coming through camera, pulling the carts with yeah. people on. I can't yeah. remember precisely. Uh, so, so one of the lovely ladies here called Gina had made uh, this with uh, Nigel. Oh, look at the underside. It's so simple. Yeah, so it's just put blue foam and a bit of plywood and then gets dressed in. These will all have to be uh, sculpted and, and molded and mm -hmm. then dressed in with the fur. And then actually, the, I think if I'm right, it's got a little bit of a dent on there, but he, that's actually plasticine nose there. Oh. So he's obviously come along and snorting as he's, right, as right. he's going through shots. Wow. But, his, but his, his, I think his head moves as well. This is all silicone with a little bit of leather work here as well. So these are great to do because you've only got, you, you, sometimes the time there's a lot of time constraints there and you've got to right. get it out reasonably quickly. What I would imagine with the super engineering time constraints of the hero characters, yeah, yeah. a one-off like this is a real yeah, refreshing. This is, this, this is sort of a few weeks and these are sort of maybe 12 to 14 weeks depending on yeah. and how complicated they are. He's lovely. He's beautiful, isn't he? Obviously big eyes as well that we all make in-house. So, oh, right. Yeah. Jimmy, I, it, it's just astounding the level of precision and yet also um, organic character you're able to keep in these, in these characters. It's incredible. Yeah. Uh, this is not a water buffalo. It's a musk ox, I think. <laughs> there we go. That was weird. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> well done.